So one of the most asked after vehicles in the electric mo uh, vehicle space is a seven seater. And we've had a few little options come to the market lately, but this one is really a big one, literally. It is the new LDV MIFA 9 People Mover. Sitting behind me, it's a uh, seven seat People Mover, three rows, lots of space, about five and a half meters long. But amazingly, we have an entry level in New Zealand that is starting at just $79,990. And then of course you get just over eight and a half thousand dollars back off that. So what's it like? We're gonna go and drive it and uh, we'll tell you how it is on this quick drive today. There are three levels of spec for the MIFA 9, starting at $79.90 driveway for the Elite, $99.990 for the Luxury, and $119.990 for the Premium. The Elite carries an already impressive haul of equipment with synthetic leather seats, heat pump based climate control, 18 inch alloys, and an impressive array of safety and driver assists. The Luxury adds items like heated, ventilated, massaging second row seats, privacy glass, LED interior lighting, 220 volt power, additional leather seat trim, and electric doors. Well, in the premium, the front row gains massage functions, a premium audio system, heated microfiber steering wheel, and much more. Okay, so getting behind the wheel of the MIFA 9. Now, it is a, you know, what we've seen Tesla do, but a lot of other brands have been slow to do, and that is a keyless was well, a key, but you don't use the key or use a button when you get in. Once you jump in and people put their seatbelts on, you can drive away. You've got a little screen in front of you here and a big 12.3 inch screen uh, in the center. I haven't seen this software in an LDV before. It is definitely, and I'll go through it a little bit later, a big step up from what we've seen previously. Now the transmission shifter in this actually takes a little bit of inspiration from uh, Tesla and Mercedes in that it's on a stalk here. So you've got a park button in the end, and otherwise it's just down for drive and up for, for reverse. Uh, you've got this uh, reach and height adjustable steering wheel, so that uh, goes up and down there. The seats on the entry level model are manual, but uh, in this one we've got lovely electric control seats. Uh, really nice design in here, everything's well placed. You've got big huge center console, cup holders, lots of storage down here, wireless charging, and uh, USB of course. Uh, you've got Apple CarPlay on the system here. Uh, someone will confirm this, but I think Android Auto is not here yet, but coming. It's Android Interconnect. Interconnect, so, right. So QD link. Okay, so slightly different there. So yeah, uh, now let's get this underway for driving. I have had a little drive already, so I do know a little bit about how this drives so far. Um, right. But it is a big vehicle, 3.2 meter wheelbase. Uh, Closing it on five and a half meters long. So that's that's certainly up there in regards to kind of the size of a big three row SUV like a Santa Fe or so forth, but with a lot more interior volume. So we have a peak power of 180 kilowatts and 350 newton meters. So even though it's big, it does get away with really good pull. Uh, there was a tiny bit of scrabble from the front wheels there. It is front wheel drive, but otherwise, that's actually pretty darn good performance for a people mover, and certainly it feels quicker than the other petrol and turbo diesel uh, options out there on the market. Um, from what I've found so far, rides very well, does have that lovely big heavy battery planted feeling, and it's really windy today, but I think that that battery weight's helped the van, I've called a van, it's a people mover, uh, not be pushed offline at all. It's, uh, it really does sit pretty well. A little bit of jitter in the ride, but overall not too bad. Uh, initial thoughts on the steering. Uh, feels nice and solid, not too heavy, not too light, just right. Uh, the lane keeping system feels really good through your hands. The audio alerts, which we've now turned off, are not wonderful, but I've been told by the team at LDV that they are recalibrating that very quickly so I suspect by the time this vehicle gets into uh, users hands it will be significantly better from that perspective than what it is now. Um, not sure we're gonna have a chance on this trip to try things like the adaptive cruise control that kind of thing but uh, we'll certainly cover that off in a later test because we're gonna drive this thing all the way from Auckland to Christchurch in a couple of weeks time so you can look forward to that uh, in a future video. Now, the software on this car is actually fairly well, fairly well advanced in what you can do with it. Uh, and there's some pretty cool technology here. This isn't some, you know, dumb vehicle as such. Uh, so if we go here into the uh, control menu, 
we go to system settings, we've got a whole heap of options. Obviously you can play around there with the various driver assistance modes, and there's lots, there's lane keep, there's adaptive cruise control, as I said before, all those sorts of things. Uh, you can go over to the driving preferences, and in the driving preferences you can choose things like your driver mode, the various uh, systems, you can set your brake pedal, the sensitive and the brake pedal, they're an electric, electronically controlled brake, which apparently is really good for efficiency with uh, regeneration and that kind of thing. So you can actually change the feel of it, uh, the steering feel, hill descent control, that kind of thing. If we go back again, we can go over into the energy panel here, and we can set the uh, regeneration through three different levels. We can set the guesser meter, uh, as we call them, the, the range meter, uh, to between dynamic and standard, so it will either stick to kind of the amount of battery you have left or let you work it out based on how you're driving. You can intelligently be, uh, heat the battery and preheat the battery, uh, which is brilliant. I think that's super smart and it's something I wish more cars had. I know New Zealand has a really moderate climate, but sometimes I think warming up a battery for a good charge, uh, particularly on a road trip or in the South Island, is brilliant. And you've also got charge scheduling. You can uh, set how much charge you want to have uh, left and they call it charge preservation, uh, and you can set the speed you want to charge, so you can vary that depending on uh, when you want to leave or uh, the power you have available to you. So that is a really clever system, and I'm really impressed. Uh, we see that in some cars, they promise it's going to come, but it's here already in the MIFA 9. Uh, on the downside, there's no SIM in the car, so don't expect an app anytime soon to connect to it, uh, but I think you've got most of what you're going to need and most of what all the app does already built in to that uh, intelligent system there. Right, so in a bit of a rare move for me, I am doing a backseat review because, well, I mean, look at these plush armchairs in the back of the Mifa 9. They are very comfortable. Uh, and uh, I've tried a couple of these in some of the flashier Japanese minivans before, but they tend to be really narrow. These feel like they've got plenty of space, plenty of width. Legroom is also excellent. There's a big footrest uh, in front of you on the uh, back of the driver's seat in this case. And then, uh, yeah, some party tricks. So for the second row, we have a touch screen down here. And if I swipe and open that, I can adjust the backrest. Pull it back. The headrest as well. Put that up and down, which is pretty cool. I can extend, oh, I can slide the seat inwards and backwards. Oh, hopefully you can still see me. Apparently this is turning into a bed. Oh, there we go. So I'm now kind of in an armchair mode track so go back again that's rather crazy oh going inside again uh, it's uh, ventilated to three levels it's heated to three levels and then you can have a massage so we've got uh, pulse waves catwalk uh, SGL Row, Comfort, Butterfly, Waist and Serpent. Let's go for the Catwalk. Oh, oh that's, uh, that's, that's pretty darn good. Yep, I, I like that, I like that. So yeah, the back row, definitely luxurious, definitely cool. Now, I'm not going to jump now on the third row. It does look pretty spacious as well, and obviously you can slide all the seats backwards and forwards to give uh, all the space you need. I'd say the back row is a, a two adults or three children really comfortably row. Um, yeah, oh, and there's a table. So push the button here, pop this up, and you've got a folding table. Just like being in a private jet. Right, so we've just stopped briefly at Bombay Charge and let's try the charging. Now the uh, Mifa can charge on AC at 11 kilowatts and DC at 90 kilowatts. It's not massive for something with this big of a battery, but it's not bad. We've plugged it in uh, at a relatively high steady, I think we're at 70% and it's already gone straight to like 80 kilowatts. So that's pretty decent. CCS2 of course. Uh, the charge port is at the rear there, um, which you maybe describe in the comments whether you like that or not. But uh, yeah, right, we're gonna head back to the hotel. Heading out on holiday, the Mifa can carry 700 kilograms and tow a ton, while luggage space can be adapted by sliding the third row forward and back. How far will the Mifa go on a charge? With two people on board and spirited driving, consumption ran around 26 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, giving a range of close to 350 kilometers. 
Expect that to drop when fully loaded, but it still makes for a solid road trip option. What do I think of the Mifa? When my test was short, I was super impressed. The space is great, I think it looks about as good as a people mover can, and it drives very well for what is basically a 2.3 ton van. But most impressive is the value. You can drive away in the Elite for just over $71,000. That undercuts the people mover competition and matches the Kiwi favorite medium sized seven seat SUVs in petrol form or diesel form, let alone electric. I suspect this will be, as far as people movers go, a hot seller. For more detail on the LDV MIFA 9, we've put the link to the specs in the description below. For more great videos on electric vehicles, subscribe to this YouTube channel. And for news, reviews, and more information on electric vehicles in New Zealand and beyond, go to www.evsandbeyond.co.nz.